Welcome back to your Caribou Data Science channel. Today is, well, today's Friday, the, uh, July the 23rd, 2021. And I'm going to, I'm basically going to do a quick video uh, to show you how to use what's called, how to use projects in our studio to manage your code and data. Trust me, you'll thank me for this because it'll make your, your life a lot easier. Okay, You're a lot easier, as you'll see very quickly. So. Let's, we're going to click on the up here, project. You can also do from the file menu. New project, new directory, new project. You notice this R, this R directory is actually located under the, under the uh, documents directory. I'm on Windows, obviously, and all my R projects are stored underneath the R directory. I would suggest that if you're on Windows, you do something like this. If you're on a Mac or Linux, you could create an R folder in, inside your home directory. But by all means, get in the habit of organizing your data using project files, okay? Because the, the single biggest reason to use project files is the working directory, okay? When you use a project, the working directory is set to the project directory. So let's take a quick look here, see exactly what we're talking about here. So the current working directory is this directory right here, and this is where we're at. And what this allows you to do, this, this eliminates, okay, the need to worry about path statements. As you'll see. Okay? Let's comment this out. Let's comment this out. Comment this out. Okay. So now I'm going to load my, my libraries up here. And this is what I want to point out to you. As you recall from your old DOS days, or even in Linux to a certain extent, although it's a different slash, the period followed by a slash, I guess, means the current directory. Okay? And the current directory is our working directory. So it says under the current directory, look for the data file subdirectory and this file here. I could, of course, use, you know, re underscore CBS, but I chose to use the base R function. So let's go ahead and run this first part here. Let's, let's go in and in all of our data. And that statement right there is why I encourage you to use uh, projects and keep all your code and your data for your projects inside that project directory. That way, again, you don't have to worry about past statements, okay? Plus, it's a way for you to structure and manage your projects. Okay, well, I suppose I should have put the, uh, the data in here. Okay, there we go. All right, so let's run this again. Clear this out. So we did that. Now, now we're going to now we're going to actually create a back rights data frame by, by using our binding to ban all twelve of these data frames into a single. Then we're going to check rows and columns for missing values.
Okay. Now, if you look up here, you see that the started time step and the ended time step are characters. So next, we're going to use Luberdate to convert those to timestamps. Now I can see that they're uh, timestamps. Now we're going to pull the hours out of those timestamps and have a start hour and end hour. Now you would expect the the start hours to be less than the end hours, right? Okay. Anything else? Okay. And that's all I'm going to uh, that's all I'm going to show you right now because I won't want to uh, confuse you. But one thing I want you to think about is, and that's the question of trip duration. How do we calculate trip, du trip duration, and how do we account for any errors that may be in a number? Okay. Anyway, hey, thanks so much for giving me five or two minutes of your time. Hopefully, this will help you folks. And again, I want to encourage you to really you get used to working with Google with with uh, our Studio projects. Okay, it will make your life so much easier. Thanks so much again. We'll catch you later on.